All right, guys, we're going to remove some noise from video. This is our test footage here. I was down at the uh, local saloon shooting some uh, low light footage, testing out a new camera I got. As you can see, we got a fair amount of unwanted noise. It was a real dim lit scene. We're going to try to clean some of this up. I've always been happy with Photoshop's noise reduction, and I just wanted to see how hard it would be run it through there. There are a few different solutions for noise reduction, and we'll take a quick look at those before we get started. Here's a look at the competition. The first one's from Dark Energy. It's for PC only and After Effects only. It's been used in the movie Axe of Valor, so I've heard. It's supposed to be Hollywood quality. As you can see, it's $3.99. However, they seem to be fans of Albert Einstein, and uh, I guess for his birthday, the week of, they're running a special. It's $149, so apparently it'll probably go on sale again if you want to wait it out and try it someday. There's plenty of reviews out on the internet. Next, we're going to look at Neat Video. A few of its uh, differences between Home and Pro. The main thing is it doesn't offer the high definition in the Home version. Available for $50 and $100 respectively, and it's uh, offered on a wide range of hosts. PC or Mac, and Final Cut, and Motion, and Premiere, as you can see. It's got the widest variety, and I've heard uh, good things about it. Actually, there are good things about all three. The last one is Red Giant software. This one here, as you can see, is $99. They offer a whole suite for $7.99, but you can buy the individual. It's uh, $99 just for the noise plug-in. It's uh, available in a wide range of operating systems. However, one uh, particular caveat is it's only available for uh, Final Cut Pro 7 right now and uh, not Final Cut X. So uh, we'll get back to my method. So we're going to go back into Final Cut Pro. we we'll go over here to Share. And if it's not a destination, add it as a destination. But we're going to choose Export Image Sequence. And then there's a few different settings, mainly the file types. And the higher quality ones didn't make a difference. However, you're shooting with more high quality footage, it might be worth doing a TIFF. But it did take a lot longer. But JPEG seemed to come out just as good as all of them. This 26 second clip took 4 minutes to export, as you'll see if you pay attention to the time up top there. We're going to go ahead and fast forward and move on to the next part and take a look at the folder. Alright, so we're going to pull up the first frame in the folder. Take a look. Oh man, look at that noise. Boy, there's a lot of noise. So now we're going to go ahead and put this frame into Adobe Photoshop. And if you don't know how or haven't built, we're going to build a batch action. Alright, so over here next to your History tab is an Actions tab, or you have, might have to add it. But anyway, down the bottom right on the Actions tab, you click New Action. And basically you're just record the actions you want done during your batch. So we're going to call this Denoise. We go up, select the Filter. The noise and we're going to do reduce noise and now here you can play around with your settings and there is a more advanced mode that breaks it down by color that I'm told uh, I didn't really play with it a whole lot but you can actually get better noise reduction if you break it down by the channels and select certain colors but uh, I just played around with the settings for a little bit if you go over and click on the photo and hold down with your mouse it'll show you the original as you adjust it so We'll uh, adjust these, and, and you know, I didn't spend a whole lot of time doing it. Uh, it looked pretty good after just a few minutes of messing with it. Uh, mainly, I uh, did the uh, reduce color noise at 100% and used the strength at 10. You can see the difference as I click there. And the sharpened detail, I noticed it just seemed to add a little bit of a computer effect around the edges a little too much. So I kind of kept it a low, lower. See, there you can see the difference as I do it. And so that looks a lot better. We're going to go ahead and let you can know that the background noise is a big difference. So got a little bit of the pinkishness in it, but uh, it definitely eliminates a lot of the blocks. So we go to File, and then Save As. And we're going to make a new folder. And we're going to tell it Delete Me or Done. And just leave them options default. I use a quality of 10 and a progressive scan of 3. You can maybe tinker with this and, and if you're looking for more speed go with the baseline or, or bumper quality down a little bit. I didn't really see a big benefit. I actually ran it through a couple different times at 12 in different ways. Uh, this way seemed to be a good combination of speed and quality. So now that we've finished that we'll go ahead and hit stop recording our batch action. 
Then we're going to go over to the folder where it delete me. Go ahead and delete this frame out of there. That way when it tries to write, it doesn't say there's a frame there I need to copy. And it might give you an error on your batch job. So we'll go back into Adobe Photoshop. Import or automate. And default action. And then these are the different batch jobs you can. This is our denoise one. And the source is a folder. So we'll go to our desktop. It's the delete me. This one here. I'm going to go ahead and choose this folder for the originals. And then uh, there's a couple different methods the override actions so it don't prompt for saves. But during our batch action, we actually saved, so we don't need to worry about that. We'll choose the folder. Click OK, and we're off to the races. Now we'll sit here and watch for a second. There's one frame. There's another frame. So anyways, this goes by. 26 seconds took 23 minutes. So if you just rounded it up to 30 seconds, it takes 25 minutes. It would take you about 50 minutes to do one minute worth. One thing I find interesting, if you look up at the top right, is the uh, processor speed. It doesn't actually really tax my processors all that hard. I've got a gig of graphics memory, uh, 16 gigs of RAM, a solid state disk. I just uh, think there's an inherently uh, slow aspect about this, that just a roundabout way of doing it. But we'll uh, quickly peek at two different results. This is one of the original here. And then we'll go ahead and put the uh, clean one, or the process one on the right. And right away, you can see just a ginormous amount of difference uh, from the bottom. Just starting the uh, countertop is, looks a lot more smooth, and almost the reflective part of it's brought back a little bit. And then along the shadows that in the uh, here, along the light, it also cleaned up some of that abbreviation noise. Now here in the backgrounds, you can see a really significant difference. It smoothed out a lot of that noise, especially in the pinkish range of the noise area. So anyway, we're going to get back to it. We'll fast forward this 23 minutes of waiting and get to the next part. Alright, so as Adobe Photoshop's finishing up, we're going to go to Premiere for the next step. So we're waiting for uh, Premiere to load. I just want to talk about Final Cut X. In Final Cut 7, you used to be able to import images as a sequence and set a frame rate, and it was pretty handy and nice. Final Cut 10 took that away. There is one method where you import all the stills and make it a compound clip, but I had issues retiming it, and uh, there's a few other settings that just made it a real pain to do. So Adobe... Premiere, we want to make sure uh, to keep audio in sync. That's one of the problems I have with Final Cut was keeping it in sync. You want to really uh, pay attention to what your frame weights were. We were bringing in 30p footage, so we're going to use a 30p setting for our sequence. And then now that we have Premiere running, we're going to go to File, Import. We're going to import a folder, and then when you get to that folder, we're going to do Delete Me Done. And we're going to check the first frame and then click Import Image Sequence. There are some naming conventions you have to make sure. They're basically sequentially named and you need a, enough numbers to cover the total amount of frames. So you couldn't do 0, 1 and then go past 99. So now that we got that in, we're going to export it back out so we can uh, see what the results are. And again, you have to pay attention to your uh, frame rates and, and types and codecs. We're just going to do uh, ProRes. And then there are a few different settings for this codec as well. Uh, we're not going to really change that much except for our aspect ratio. And then the field order, we're going to make it progressive. And then we're going to uh, do a square pixel rate 1 to 1. And that fills out our screen. Go ahead and export this. This doesn't take uh, but under a minute, so I don't really factor that in for the total time. And then we'll load this up in the final cut and compare the results. All right, now we got them lined up in final cut. You can start to see the difference between the two. Go ahead and freeze it right here for a second and take a look. You really notice the difference in the noise reduction. We'll advance it forward where it's a little bit out of focus. 
And you can again notice the noise overall noise reduction. So we're going to go ahead and export this. I'm going to blow it up to 200% so you can really uh, see it. And then I'll let it play just the 26 seconds so you can see the clip in its entirety side by side. Well, guys, thanks a lot for joining in, and I hope you have a good night. Bye.